Hello friends, now in this series of videos in theory of computation, uh, we study formal languages and basically we study languages based on two platforms, either on grammars which are generating models which generate languages or you know on machine models which accept languages and we work you know intensely on what are you know strings and how we study languages and a lot of work to do, a very important theoretical subject. Uh, but what I feel you know instead of starting discussion in this orthodox way with grammar and all these things let me first directly start the discussion with complexity theory so what is complexity theory why we study complexity theory solvability and solvability decidability and decidability what are p problems and p problem and p problems it's a very intense topic and most of the time you know students feel very confused and puzzled that you know what are these things because every year in gate or any other competitive exam let me tell you for sure they are going to ask you, you know one or two questions at least from complexity theory the topic is common both in algorithms and in theory of computation you can study it anywhere uh, one more thing you know as far as industry is concerned and private companies they will not ask uh, that particular topic uh, a number of times in placement papers but you know wherever in any IIT and IITs you go in interviews or you know in any other public sector exams uh, they are going to ask you this complexity theory as it is very important in further research so it gives you a wider perspective of computer science what are the problems we are dealing with or what are the problems uh, which should be selected for your research work so I personally also feel that is a very important topic so let me start discussion directly first with complexity theory and then based on your feedback we will uh, you know continue with you know grammar part and machine models and all the other types okay friends now let's start discussing this you know uh, basic logic of complexity theory but let me tell you uh, I'm not going into very much depth and very intense logic very formal definitions I'll make the discussion very light so that it will be very easy to understand but let me promise you after you know watching these videos you will be capable to solve any problem on complexity theory and you can participate in any discussion up to any logic where you know we discuss complex theories and you know decidability and decidability all these things okay at the discussion now let me ask you a very basic question what computer science deals with you know what actually we deals with you see we study a lot of subjects like you know database operating system theory of computation discrete maths a number of subjects in every semester but if somebody asks you what we actually deals with you see we actually deals with uh, you know problem solving that is how to solve a problem or you can say we actually deals with machine learning means we train a machine a deterministic machine a computer to how to work actually we program a machine you understand this thing we actually in theoretical computer science in core computer science don't relate that much with the hardware part so it is more or less up to electronic field that is how you design a machine uh, secondly we actually also don't relate with the operational part that is how you know uh, to you operate the system but actually we deals with machine learning we teach a machine how to work we write algorithms we write procedures and after which you know these algorithms are converted translated into particular programming languages and that that process continues so basically what computer science deal with we deals with machine learning okay now let me ask you a very basic question which most of the time I used to ask in my classes the question is for example there's a problem so in computer science now we divide problems into two parts what are those one we say solvable problem and second we say unsolvable problem so it's a very common sense and you know most of the students think so it's very easy to understand because if there's a problem let me say I'll divide into two parts solvable and unsolvable okay now let me ask you what is a solvable problem you think about it for some time when can I say a problem is solvable so most of the time a student gave me complex replies like you know sir uh, like uh, like Bellman Ford algorithm single source shortest path and or uh, something like uh, spanning trees these problems are solvable how to compute shorter distances but basically what is solvable problem so uh, by common sense we understand you know 
if first uh, we are able to solve a problem then it is said to be what solvable i am not going into very depth whether algorithms are there procedures are there or how to find a solution for example like for example 2 plus 2 now that is a mathematical problem it is solvable so let me tell you when can i say a problem is solvable first there must exist a potential solution and you know you have algorithm to how to find that solution then you can say the problem is what soluble to koi problem solve ho sakta hai aur aap usko solve karna jante hai you have algorithm then you can very uh, commonly say the problem is what soluble very easy to say 2 plus 2 it is 4 the problem is solvable okay but the problem becomes a little bit complex when i ask you know uh, what is unsolvable problem now you tell me what is a unsolvable problem now uh, i get you know very uh, different kind of reply somebody say to counting stars is unsolvable or some mathematical exception something divided by zero is unsolvable a number of logics are there hmm. now you imagine uh, for a while solvable you know you know the problem can be solved and you know the algorithm how it is to be solved you solve a problem you say the problem is what solvable unsolvable there's a little bit dis, uh, uh, confusion but you say you know uh, you cannot disappear suddenly unsolvable you cannot time travel something like this or counting stars dividing by zero number of mathematical exceptions are there uh, these are called what unsolvable so let me say a problem is solvable if you can solve it and the problem is unsolvable but if you cannot solve it simple but now let me tell you a story uh, a, a little bit uh, very interesting thing you understand this story and then after that story again I'll ask you what is solvability and what is unsolvability according to computer science hello friends so now to understand solvability and unsolvability more fundamentally uh, let me discuss a very basic popular problem called uh, konigsberg bridge problem in graph theory uh, it it was a very popular problem in 17th century uh, konigsberg was a very popular city in persia at that time right now it is russia and what was the problem a river was flowing through the city okay and there were two islands between uh, and let me say that is a land part a and say let me a land this is a land part b and there were two islands between the rivers let me name them c and d for example and there were network of bridges like this so the problem were you know there are seven bridges uh, two bridge connecting a and c one bridge connecting a and d one bridge connecting c and d one c b and one d b now there were seven bridges and two island and you understand the river is flowing in between huh? now as i told you that was a very popular city so these were very popular markets and there was a popular game among the commoners what you must start from any one of the land part you choose either a b c or d huh? but the game is after traversing every bridge exactly one you must end up on the same land part from which you have started so for example you can start from a but then you must have a walk such that you traverse every bridge exactly once and in the last the starting and the ending land part must be same for example if you have started from a then in the end you must end up on what b again you understand you can traverse a land part more than one time no issue in that but every bridge has to be traversed exactly one time so it was a very popular problem among the it is a kind of a game among the commoners you know a number of mathematicians tried to solve the problem that is to devise a walk in such a fashion that you traverse every bridge exactly once and by uh, starting from a land part you must end up on the same land part so that was a popular open in the market for at least 200 300 years which was finally solved by Euler in 19 and 1736 and how Euler this problem uh, leads to a new definition of solvability and unsolvability and there is uh, that is why I'll tell you why this problem is so important because actually that was a problem which leads to the inception of graph theory so we say uh, for, for solving this problem you will devise the first graph which uh, first graph which actually you know uh, leads to a new subject called graph theory so what you did you understand this thing you and actually I think you also know what is Euler graph and Hamiltonian graph so that is why you call that graph and graph 3 Euler graph because that is how Euler solved this problem now you understand what Euler did Euler transformed this problem into a graph how Euler say let me convert every land part into a vertex 
सो लेट मी हैव अ वर्टेक्स विथ फोर सॉरी लेट मी हैव अ ग्राफ विथ फोर वर्टेसेस एंड लेट मी कन्वर्ट एवरी ब्रिज इन टू एन एज सो यू सी टू ब्रिज इज कनेक्टिंग ए एंड सी तो लेट मी कनेक्ट ए एंड सी देन लेट मी कनेक्ट सी एंड बी लेट मी कनेक्ट सी डी ए डी एंड वॉट बी डी सो नाओ दीज टू आर एनोलॉगस टू इच अदर दैट वॉज अ प्रैक्टिकल प्रॉब्लम इन द ग्राफ बट यू लर ट्रांसफॉर्म इट इन टू अ फॉर्मल ग्राफ वेर यू हैव फोर वर्टिस एंड यू हैव अ नेटवर्क ऑफ एजेस नाउ द प्रॉब्लम वॉज स्टिल द सेम वॉट वॉज इट यू स्टार्ट फ्रॉम एनी वन ऑफ द वर्टेक्स एंड बाई ट्रेवलिंग एवरी एज एग्जैक्टली वन यू मस्ट एंड अपन द सेम वर्टेक्स एंड नाउ दिस प्रॉब्लम आई थिंक ऑल ऑफ यू नो इज नथिंग बट अ यूलर ग्राफ problem or a euler cycle so what is a euler graph a euler graph is a graph which contains a euler cycle where you start from a vertex by traversing every edge of the graph exactly one you must end up on the same vertex but you may travel any edge sorry any vertex more than one vertex can be traversed more than one that is allowed but every edge has to be traversed exactly once and you must end up on the same vertex from which you started okay now what euler said euler said assume for a minute for example there's a vertex which is a starting vertex for example now you understand this thing if a vertex vertex is a starting vertex then you must go out from the vertex because you want to traverse acha no matter on how many vertex you roam around you must end up on the same vertex because ab ye starting vertex hai to yahi se aapko start karna hoga aap kahin kitna bhi ghumo yahi pe aapko wapas aana padega now you understand that is a undirected graph so what will be the degree of the starting vertex it is 2 2 actually it is even why i am saying so because i am i, I didn't said ki you traverse every vertex exactly once so what is possible you may again go out from the vertex that is okay but again after some traversal you must end up again on what starting vertex so if a vertex is a starting vertex it also has to be an ending vertex so you may go out that is okay you may ro roam around that is okay but you must end up on the starting vertex so odd and then again what even i am talking about degree again you can go out that is okay but again you must end up on what the same starting vertex it means what the final degree of that starting and ending vertex must be even no matter how many times you go out but you have to come in you go out you have to come in so if a vertex is a starting vertex the degree of that vertex should be even you understood that point okay now let me say or let me have a different uh, theory let me has say there is a vertex suppose it is an intermediate vertex now you understand this thing If a vertex is a intermediate vertex, can I start from the vertex? No, it is an intermediate vertex. So, from somewhere I'll come to that vertex. Probably from starting vertex or any other vertex, I'll come to this vertex. But because it is an intermediate vertex, can I end my walk or traversal on this vertex? Answer is no. You have to go out because the game or the condition says the starting vertex has to be the ending vertex. So, if it is not a starting vertex, it is an intermediate vertex. Then you You must come in from somewhere, but you must go out because you have to end up on the starting vertex. Again, you understand as according to rule of the game, uh, game of the rule, you understand. Uh, a starting word uh, a intermediate vertex can be traversed also more than one times so again if i come here and again i have to go out because you cannot end up on the intermediate vertex either so you understand this thing if a vertex is intermediate again the degree is required to be what even because you come from somewhere then you go out again you come from somewhere then you go out now you understand this thing there are there could be two kind of vertices one is starting and one is inter immediate vertices now if a vertex is a starting vertex the degree has to be even otherwise no traversal possible according to the rule and if a vertex is intermediate also you understand you i cannot have a vertex with a even degree or with a odd degree you see i must come in then i must go out it means what if you have or if you want such kind of traversal such that you start from a vertex and by traversing every edge of the graph exactly once and you end up on the same vertex then irrespective of the fact the vertex is starting or intermediate the degree of the vertex has to be what even yes or no yes that was a 
you lose argument and the argument holds good actually but now you study this graph the uh, conics bar bridge graph you understand here i have you know four vertices what is the degree of a you see 1 2 and 3 degree of c 1 2 3 4 and 5 again 3 and again 3 you understand here for a surprise the degree of every vertex is what odd but what i want the degree of every vertex is what even so again you understand is it possible is it possible to traverse this graph or this city in such a fashion that you start from a land part and by traversing every bridge of the graph exactly when you end up on the same land part answer is no and euler proved it mathematically but you understand what is the interesting part about this story you may be imagining why it is so interesting and so popular what Euler said as a conclusion you say Euler didn't said that I I cannot solve this problem but what Euler said I solved this problem because I proved that the problem cannot be solved now you understand that is very interesting part Euler said I proved mathematically that there exists no potential solution actually there exists no solution and I proved that this problem cannot be solved hence I solved the problem because now the problem do not require any further discussion chapter closed so now you understand this thing now you understand this thing again let me ask you one thing now let me remove this graph first I ask you a problem which can be of two types either solvable or what unsolvable again let me ask you when can I say a problem is solvable now you understand now let me improve my definition in the starting I was saying a problem is said to be solvable if it is what solvable and if you can solve it to find a solution but actually that is not a complete definition now you understand what is solvability a problem is said to be solvable first either if you find a solution means what there exists a potential solution you have an algorithm or a procedure to find that solution then you can say the problem is what solvable but also you say a problem can also prove to be solvable if you proved mathematically that there exists no solution and if you proved mathematically that there exists no solution then also the problem do not require any further discussion because we know the problem can never be solved because actually the problem is trivial because there exists no solution so no matter how many times you try with different algorithms or procedures you will never get a solution because actually the solution doesn't exist so now you understand let me give a final definition a problem is said to be solvable either you know there exists a solution and you know al uh, algorithm or a procedure to find a solution or you proved mathematically that the problem cannot be solved in both the cases you have solved the problem because now it do not require any further discussion I hope you understand the logic but now what will be more interesting is then if that is the case then what is unsolvability you understand when can I say a problem is unsolvable so again you understand unsolvability according to you know computer science is a temporary status of a problem because a problem is unsolvable why we say because at that instant of time neither we are able to solve the problem or neither we are in the nor we are in the position to say that the problem problem cannot be solved means we are confused the discussion is still open na to hum ye bol pa rahe ki solve ho sakta hai aur na hi hum ye bol pa rahe ki solve nahi ho sakta if a problem is in that domain then i'll say or computer science says then the problem is what unsolvable but let me tell you it is a temporary status for example let me give you a fuzzy example i'll say i'll clap you all disappear i'll clap you all come back understand this thing you tell me the problem solvable unsolvable can you disappear right now at this instant of time answer is no even in science right now we don't understand how to disappear and how to come back but can you prove it mathematically that this problem cannot be solved because you imagine uh, before hundred thousand years before 500 years it was unimaginable that I am shooting a video in my studio and you are watching it somewhere else yes or no so that was unsolvable right now we have solved it out so you know the problem is uh, uh, the problem 
प्रॉब्लम ऑफ अवर इमेजिनेशन दैट इट इज वेरी कन्फाइंड टू अवर इमेजिनेशन आप वही सोच सकते हैं जो आप सोच सकते हैं सो नाउ यू अंडरस्टैंड दिस थिंग इट मे सीम सम टाइम दैट सम प्रॉब्लम आर अनसॉल्वेबल बट मे बी आफ्टर हंड्रेड टू हंड्रेड ईयर द प्रॉब्लम बिक ऑन सॉल्व बिकॉज देयर वर वेरी यू नो कॉम्प्लेक्स प्रॉब्लम विच आर अनसॉल्वेबल फाइव हंड्रेड ईयर्स बैक बट राइट नाउ वी हैव ऑलरेडी सॉल्व दैम सो इफ अ प्रॉब्लम इज अनसॉल्वेबल आई एल से सो नाउ टू डिस एंड देन यू कम बैक द प्रॉब्लम इज अनसॉल्वेबल वाई एट दिस इंस्टेंस ऑफ टाइम वाई बिकॉज राइट नाउ नाइदर यू आर एबल टू डिस नाइदर नॉर यू आर एबल टू प्रूव दैट द प्रॉब्लम और यू कैन नॉट डिस एवर सो प्रॉब्लम इज स्टिल ओपन बट यू नो इट्स ऑल थियोरिटिकल कंप्यूटर साइंस बट यू प्लीज अंडरस्टैंड what humans are doing we are trying continuously on what this unsolvability domain and you understand this thing one day with every problem we are always going to solve it out why because either we understand that we can solve it there exists a solution there exists a solution space and we have a algorithm to find the solution or we will prove that there exists no solution and if there is no solution then there could never be exist a algorithm or a procedure but again in both the cases will solve the problem so you understand one day every problem which is right now in this unsolvability domain is going to be solved out because we will know then whether it whether there exists a solution if that is the case we will find algorithm or will proved mathematically that then that problem could not be solved so let me tell you one day this domain is going to be empty and every problem will come into the domain of what solvability because we will understand i am not saying we'll generate a solution but we'll understand whether a solution can be generated or cannot be generated so that was a basic discussion of solvability and unsolvability i'll hope you understand but again uh, out of them uh, what is our discussion will be on solvability so again let me conclude the definition a problem is said to be solvable if you solved it out you know there exists a potential solution you have algorithm or a procedure to find the solution or you proved mathematically that there exists no solution space and uh, and hence also the problem can never be solved then you also what solve the problem so i uh, will work further on this solvability domain because in the next video i'll tell you how to divide this solvability into again very two popular problems in computer science which is decidability and undecidable it is also very confusing what is decidable what is undecidable because both of them come in the domain of what solvability especially you know the halting problem of turing machine is undecidable and toc most of the time you will uh, you will you know get these word decidability and decidability so in the next video i'll discuss them in depth what is decidability what is undecidability and i hope you will uh, like this series of you know uh, first complexity theory please give me your feedbacks uh, whether you want further problems practice problems on solvability or this discussion is sufficient or let me go into depth okay thank you